Doamnelor și domnilor, stimați parteneri, dragi jurnaliști, îmi face plăcere să vă urez bine ați venit la conferința de presă prilejuită de vizita reprezentantului special al Secretarului General al Organizației Națiunilor Unite pentru combaterea violenței împotriva copiilor. Îmi face plăcere să-i dau cuvântul la începutul conferinței noastre, domnului Gabriel Pocăl, și să salut prezența reprezentantului special pentru combaterea violenței împotriva copiilor, a doamnei Najat Malamșa și a doamnei președinte a Autorității Naționale pentru Protecția Drepturilor Copilului și Adopție, doamna Elena Tudor. Avem o mică problemă cu... It's not working. Yes. Ok. Sorry. Mulțumim foarte mult. Gabriel, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And let me first of all just briefly uh, express my appreciation for the special representative's visit. Um, we appreciate that the government of Romania has invited you and needless to say that for UNICEF your mandate on violence against children is something that is very, very close to our heart uh, here at UNICEF. Um, violence against children is a global issue that we know affects over a billion uh, children every year. And that means that a protective environment is not a reality for these girls and boys. And we know that when unaddressed, violence, exploitation and abuse can have many consequences for the development of children, uh, whether it's emotional um, or cognitive um, or psychological. And we know that violence can then, and the consequences of violence can lead to the intergenerational passing on of trauma and violence itself to the next generation when it is unaddressed. So it's really an issue that affects uh, society as a whole and should therefore concern us all. Now, Romania is no exception, of course, and the government of Romania is very well aware of that, and this is why since 2016, uh, Romania has been a member of the global program to end violence. And of course, the National Child Protection Authority uh, represented it here today is a key driver uh, in these efforts. Now, I just have a, a couple of points that I would like to briefly underline as a way of introduction. Um, and one is that I think violence um, often needs to be addressed a bit like a health issue, like a disease, right? You would always want to avoid that somebody contracts a disease rather than treat a patient once you've become sick. Um, because simply put, one child experiencing violence is one child too many. And in whatever setting that happens, at home, in the community, or in schools. And we know that response action, whether it is from child protection authorities, police, or justice system, this is far more complex and also more costly than preventing from, uh, violence from happening in the first place. So if there were just two asks that I could put forward from a UNICEF perspective, um, these two uh, would be it. The first one, Romania needs to uh, invest more into integrated, uh, available uh, services at the community level that combines health, education with child protection and social protection services. The evidence for why that is important is all available. The costing for Romania and more important, the return of investment has been calculated. And finally, uh, fortunately, the law and social assistance demands the national scale-up of this minimum package of services. Um, so it's really about covering the last mile, because it is not enough that we have the right laws and the right uh, policies in place. If the services are not truly available to children and to families on the ground, these laws uh, may just not mean much uh, to these children. And the second point is that I believe that as a society, uh, as a Romanian society, I think there is a need to continue um, to acknowledge and to strengthen positive, <coughs> positive social norms. Um, and that would help us in remembering and understanding and in demanding that violence against children, no matter the circumstances, is unacceptable. 
um, we need to remember that girls and boys experience violence very differently and therefore the, the both prevention and response measures need to be done differently. Um, and we need to be vigilant because we know that violence um, is also committed um, in new environments such as online when we think of cyberbullying and other forms of violence happening now also increasingly online. And lastly, I think we need to remember as a society that the way we see and treat children matters. It matters for their presence, it matters for their future and for all our future. And with that, I want to thank you once again and uh, I'm passing on to the special representative herself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gabrielle. <coughs> Dear Elena, I know all of them know you as president of the National Authority for the Protection of the Rights of the Child and Adoption. Dear Gabrielle, acting representative of UNICEF Romania, dear media representatives. Uh, first, I want to thank Her Excellency Mrs. Gabriela Firea, Ministry of Minister of Family, Youth and Equal Opportunities, you have long title in this country, huh? on behalf of the government of Romania for having invited me to visit Romania and UNICEF for its strong support during this visit. This visit to Romania, which started on 17 May, ends today. During this visit, I met various high-level government representatives from Ministry of Family, Youth and Equal Opportunities, the Chancellery of the Prime Minister, the Ministries of Education, Health and Finances, as well as representatives from the Ombudsperson, various NGOs, and most importantly, children and youth representative. Yesterday, I traveled to Yashi, where I met the county authority, composed by the county council, the G DGA SPG, I hope I pronounce it well, uh, because the title also is very long, the public health directorate, the center for educational resources, and the school inspectorate. I met also the local intersectoral team to have a better understanding how they work together, NGOs and visits, projects and sites, uh, you know, targeting Romanian uh, children, but also Ukrainian uh, children unaccompanied or accompanied by caregivers. And I discussed a lot during the whole day with support teams and children, and I also met with the United Nations agencies in the country to try to have a better understanding. Let me share with you some key takeaways after this fruitful visit. First, many achievements. And I want to congratulate, you know, mainly the Ministry of Family, Youth and Equal Opportunities and the National Authority for the Protection of the Rights of the Child and Adoption for the recent launch in public debate of the National Strategy for the Protection of Child Rights 2022-2027, that it is in line with international and European Union standards. And I hope that it will be duly implemented. <laughs> Romania has established a solid legal framework. You have a huge number of laws huh? and has been taking important measures to end and prevent violence against children including critical progress towards implementation of alternative to institutionalization. The resilience and recovery plan, as well as the steps taken to implement the European Child Guarantee on June 2021, are essential to ensure care, protection, well-being services for all children, including the most vulnerable poor and poor children. The response to the situation of refugees, in particular children from institutions in Ukraine, is remarkable. But I have some other key takeaways that will address the challenges. The effective implementation of all this solid legal and policy framework, as well as the optimization of resources, remains a main challenge to continue widening the full prevention and protection of children from all forms of violence in all settings, including domestic violence, gender-based violence, early marriage, bullying and cyberbullying. 
corporal punishment, trafficking, sexual exploitation, early identification, protection and care of children living in poor and rural areas. And you know that you have 48% of children who are living in rural areas. Children with disabilities, children on the move, minorities including special attention to Roma children and to children in alternative care, critical attention to mental health are essential for sustainable, sustained, durable solution. My third key takeaway, and I jump on what Gabriel told, investing in preventing and ending violence against children cannot wait because violence has a huge human and economic cost. Violence economic burden is the sum of all the costs incurred by its child victims, their families, societies, and governments. A seminal study suggests that these costs should be as high as 8% of the global GDP, and at national level of up to 5% of GDP. This does not take into account the huge increases of violence as a result of the COVID-19, which can be calculated on trillions of euros wasted each year, and which can be invested to strengthen the fragile social services. And when I am speaking about social services, it's social services with a big S. It's not only cash transfer, it's a continuum of services that goes beyond cash transfer. And this is a reality for Romania also. My fourth key takeaway, a renewed regard to results and performance-based budgeting is therefore very much necessary to be able for children to touch in their daily life and daily reality the progress made in the legal and policy framework. It's wonderful to be frank with you, to have wonderful laws, to have wonderful strategies in papers, but we need to make sure that they are translated in concrete ways and in concrete action for children and their caregivers at local level. Steady progress on decentralization, accompanied by strengthening the social services workforce, which includes incentives for professionals to work in remote and rural areas is an absolutely needed step towards optimization of resources and effectiveness. I met a lot of persons who are mainly social workers who are working, you know, daily. They are overwhelmed. They feel alone and, and they need really support. And I think it's really, really important to never forget that having a quality of social services is based on human resources well-trained and feeling well. Cash and care are an inseparable tandem which respond to the complex and multidimensional nature of violence. A minimum package of services, as highlighted by, ben by Gabriel, should be considered as a key investment, not just as an expenditure which brings back huge returns for the individuals, but also for the entire society. The ongoing efforts by the states and the local authorities together with key partners like UNICEF and NGOs is a good step in this direction and should be further strengthened and expanded. In addition, to ensure adequate resources to the, to the implementing local level entities and services, including expansion of social work professional, a more robust, effective coordination and accountability is also necessary. Your protection is shared with many key stakeholders, and it's not clear who is doing what and who is accountable to whom. Investing in a continuum of child and gender sensitive violence prevention and protection pays off. Ending exclusion and ending violence against children cannot wait. Romanian children that I met have expressed their concern regarding the normalization of violence and the difficult access to child protection services. And they call for a most just, inclusive, safe, and empowering communities for and with them. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.
Mulțumim frumos și noi și mulțumim în primul rând doamnei reprezentant special al Secretariatului General, un a dat curs invitației doamnei ministru Gabriela Fira. Suntem într-un moment în care încercăm să ne facem o nouă strategie și aveam nevoie și de un punct de vedere independent, de opinie din afara sistemului, să vedem dacă într-adevăr suntem pe drumul cel bun. Pentru că, așa cum spunea și doamna reprezentant, în momentul ăsta știți cu toții că avem elaborată strategia națională privind protecția și promovarea drepturilor copilului, care este în dezbatere publică. Sunt convinsă că o parte dintre dumneavoastră ne-ați tot... <laughs> ne tot auzit în ultima vreme că uh, și noi am afirmat că importantă este acum prevenirea separării copilului de familie și întărirea capacității autorităților administrației publice locale. Și aici chiar am să fac o paranteză. Mă bucur că ni s-a confirmat acest lucru, că într-adevăr direcția noastră în viitorul apropiat acolo trebuie să fie îndreptată. Atenția noastră trebuie să fie îndreptată în mod special în a întări capacitatea autorităților locale în a sprijini profesioniști de la nivel local să-și facă treaba și, în primul rând, a și ajuta autoritățile locale financiar, pentru că nu putem să cerem autorităților locale să ofere servicii de calitate dacă nu asigurăm resursa umană specializată și nici nu le acordăm sprijinul financiar. Lucrul ăsta se va întâmpla cât de curând, pentru că, așa cum probabil o parte dintre noastră știți, avem în PNRR, în Planul Național de Redresare și de Reziliență, asumată o lege, legea privind prevenirea separării copilului de familie. Și toate uh, lucrurile care nu au funcționat foarte bine, cu siguranță își vor găsi acolo soluții legislative, și uh, ne bucurăm să aflăm că și doamna uh, reprezentant a constatat că avem legi bune, încă mai avem mult de lucrat în ceea ce privește implementarea. Și o să avem o atenție specială, o să acordăm o atenție specială acestui lucru, pentru că trebuie neapărat să ne stabilim și indicatori. Nu este suficient să uh, ai prevederi legislative, și, în primul rând, cred că trebuie să asociem și să, să pornim de la a ști exact ce avem la nivel local, care sunt copiii, să identificăm și pentru asta o să avem deja un proiect pregătit, o să începem implementarea unui proiect finanțat din fonduri europene, Sistemul Național de Adopții, se numește așa, însă, o să avem evidența tuturor copiilor, copiii de la nivel local, da, împreună cu primăriile, o să identificăm pe toți, să știm care sunt nevoile lor și nu numai nevoile lor din punct de vedere social, ci nevoile lor, că atunci când vorbim de copii, trebuie să avem în vedere socialul, educația, sănătatea. O să mergem mai departe cu evidența la nivel județean, copiii din sistemul de protecție specială și abia după ajungem la adopție. Nu poți lua decizii la nivel național, dacă nu știi exact pe ce stai. Este ceva mai târziu, dar este bine că avem și în acest moment un astfel de demers. Da, violența este inacceptabilă și știm cu toții lucrul ăsta. Numai că violența nu trebuie să fie, nu este o, o problematică care po poate fi soluționată exclusiv de serviciile sociale. Trebuie într-adevăr și o să facem lucrul ăsta, să-i facem să lucreze împreună la nivel local, asistenții sociali, cadrele didactice și uh, personalul din sistemul de sănătate. Și asta este o realitate. Sunt deocamdată prevederi legislative, există tot felul de echipe interdisciplinare, dar încă mai avem de lucrat să-i facem să lucreze efectiv împreună și să reușim să avem instrumente unice și nu fiecare să lucreze în domeniul său de activitate. Să fie un instrument unic care să fie aplicat de toți specialiștii. Numai prin lucru împreună vom reuși într-adevăr să facem ca prevenirea separării la nivel local să fie posibilă. 
Și, într-adevăr, asta ne dorim ca investiția în copii să nu mai fie privită ca o cheltuială, ci să ne gândim din start la ceea ce înseamnă efectele pe termen lung ale investiției în copii. Că vom avea copii, dacă avem copii sănătoși, dacă avem copii care merg la școală, copii care nu sunt expuși riscului de violență în familie sau nu sunt victime ale violenței în familie, cu siguranță viitorul României ar fi mult, este, o să fie, mult mai bun și costurile sociale vor fi mult mai limitate. Toate lucrurile astea le avem deja planificate și lucrăm la ele și le vom face cu siguranță împreună cu sprijinul agențiilor UN care au fost și vor fi în continuare alături de noi. Mulțumim încă o dată, doamna reprezentant special, pentru vizita pe care ați făcut-o și contăm în continuare pe sprijinul organizațiilor UN în România. Mulțumim foarte mult! Avem o sesiune de întrebări și răspunsuri, așa vă mare rugăminte de a vă prezenta și de a ne spune cui adresați întrebarea dumneavoastră. Rugăminte către translator dacă se poate schimba acest device pentru că nu funcționează. Mulțumesc! Bună ziua! Se aude? O secundă nu mă dacă vezi. Bună ziua, Raluca Bârca, Antena 3. Pentru că ne-ați vorbit despre o legislație stufoasă și pentru că și noi știm că există această problemă în România, aș vrea să vă întreb dacă ne puteți oferi un caz concret de legislație stufoasă pe care ați văzut-o, să spunem așa, în documente, dar în realitate nu era neapărat aplicată. Întrebarea este adresată? Doamne reprezentant special. I have a big problem with that, but I will try to... You are... The question is about some other example when you have legislation and that are complex and that are not implemented. I think it's a case in various parts in the world, because for policy makers it's more easier to draft laws and it takes one, two years, and uh, yes, uh, and after they have to adopt it or not, but the effectiveness of legislation is really, it's a big, it's challenging. And I think one of the indicators, it is uh, for me that it's important, is we need to make states accountable for the effective implementation of the legislation, not congratulating them for adopting but for effective implementation. And this is due to various factors, you know, because you have political interests, this is first. Uh, secondly, it's uh, easy to write, you know, and to make, make it in line with st international standards. And the second, uh, third things, it's they never, never estimate the cost of the implementation, human costs and financial costs. And after they told you that it's not very possible because of the lack of resources and because of competitive priority. But I think we need to take into account another point, that the people, population, children themselves, need to be aware and to be really empowered regarding the legislation and make policy maker accountable when they adopt a law to make sure that it's going to be implemented. And UN system, we have a role in monitoring also the implementation, effective implementation, because laws normally are here to put a frame that it's really protecting children because, you know, I discussed with many children and regarding to come back to Romania, I think they did a lot, a lot regarding laws and strategies. The problem is how you can make all that really translated in operational program for those who are working at communal level, you know, in this remote and uh, rural areas, in this village and so on, to make it operational. 
And to make it also, we need to make it transparent. We need to be transparent also and to be accountable because when we do something, it's important also to show to people, to citizens, this is what we commit to do. And to put also indicators because it's not about services, it's about people. Încă o întrebare din partea mea, dacă se poate. În cazul în care ați vizitat centrele sociale, care a fost impresia dumneavoastră despre copiii instituționalizați de la noi? It's a, yes, social center and my impression. I uh, visited centers where children are sheltered and accommodated, I told you in Yashi yesterday, and I met also many children and youth from Romania, uh, and also I had a discussion, you know, with all this intersectoral local, uh, you know, team. And uh, what I can tell you uh, regarding that first, it, you have a lot of mechanism. You have outline, you have emergency uh, desk, you have uh, mobile unit, uh, you have social workers, you have teachers, you have all of them were sitting judge laws and, and the law, uh, law enforcement agencies. The problem is that when you start discussing with them, there is a big I am speaking about local level. There is a big issue regarding, you know, what we mean by social workers. And all the social services are really on the shoulders of, you know, the social workers. So, teachers and school counselors, I just want to remind you that bullying, cyber bullying, are occurring mainly in school and around school, online and offline. And this is the role also of teachers and school counselors when they exist, really to provide counsel, guidance. I, I know also that they put, you know, groups, you know, in each school anti-bullying, but when I discuss with children, some are working, some are not, because you cannot only establish it without empowering children themselves. And children are really very good on that because they establish their own application. You have also health sectors with all these nurse, uh, you know, community nurses, but they have not a lot. And at the same time, they are not linked to family doctors and mainly in the remote areas. So the big issue is that you have many pieces and they are overwhelmed. And in the same time, People and children themselves are not aware about all that because, uh, and the big issue for me, and this we, the policymaker have to really take into account, that you know children and vulnerable vulnerable fa families are not trusting this institution, and they have. If you need to build trust in institution, you have to be credible and to deliver. And also, I think if we want to fight poverty and exclusion, it's not only about cash transfer. Yes, you need it, but you need to empower population to make them, you know, leaving poverty and becoming really actors. So it's a continuum. It is why, you know, when we are speaking about social services, it means, you know, cash transfer. It means early education that is safe, inclusive, empowering, and so on. It means health, mental health, and sexual reproductive health. It means child and uh, gender sensitive justice. It means social protection that it's cash transfer, universal health coverage, decent work, and so on. And it means also what is important, parenting. It's not only providing cash transfer and telling them bye-bye. It's really empowering them and how you can make them really good parents. And the last, but not the least, is also, and this these children and youth raise it highly, is really how you can fight stigma and discrimination and also change the social perception. And here is how you can bring children as agents of change, communities, to make them aware that violence against children, you know, corporal punishment, you know, uh, uh, beating, you know, humiliating, uh, are really bad and impacting, and to start establishing you know, an intergenerational dialogue. And I can tell you that it's possible because I am coming from a country, I'm from Morocco, and I know that we can make it, but we cannot make it only by raising awareness campaign one shot. It's working closely with the community and building trust because we can be poor, but we have ideas, and the most experts in the world are those who are living in these circumstances.
Bună ziua, Claudia Nonescu, Metropola TV. Just one second. Okay. <laughs> Bună ziua, Claudia Lănescu, Metropola TV. Am o întrebare tot pentru doamna reprezentant. De la o vreme aud tot mai mulți oameni, aici vorbim despre opinia publică, care spun că și-ar dori să existe o testare psihologică a viitorilor părinți. Sau o testare psihiatrică, astfel încât copiii să nu mai ajungă să fie abuzați în cadrul propriei uh, familii. Vă spun ce se aude în opinia publică de la o vreme, mai exact de câteva luni de zile. Pentru că sunt foarte mulți copii abuzați sexual, așa cum a spus și dumneavoastră, bătuți cu brutalitate sau în cel mai negru scenariu chiar se ajunge la omor. Și aș vrea să-mi oferiți un punct de vedere în acest sens. Understand well and correct me if I am wrong. What you are telling me is that currently it's to have a kind of testing of families by a psychiatric to see if they are potentially sexual abuser. If I may make it short. If they are prepared to uh, having a child, I think mentally, physically, and so on. So I am. I am not sure that you know. I am pediatrician, and and uh, just and uh, I'm not sure that uh, testing, you know, a psychiatric is will test you and telling you are you know a good parents or not a good parents. I think what is important is all this family support and the guidance, and this is important because you know you have. You can be poor and be a protective family. You can be rich and not a protective family. But I think what is important, and here we come back, really to social workers working at local level, because you have early sign that you can detect. And also regarding family, regarding the behavior, the relationship, this is really important. The other thing is also to make sure that children are aware and are not accepting thinking that abuse and positive discipline and all that is normal, because this is one main issue that was really uh, related. But testing families like that, I think, I, I, I'm not sure that one psychiatric will, will make it. And I think you have a big problem here in Romania, to be very frank, because when you have a child suspect of abuse or it's straightly Uh, you know, oriented to a psychiatric or a psychologist. So something, uh, it's not clear for me, because I think when you have a frontline, you know, social workers, well-trained, in, 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 even in, a, in a psychosocial support, you, you can detect signs that are direct or indirect. And it's not only one consultation, 30 minutes with a psychiatric that will tell you. And I can tell you, because I was working with children, Those who were sexually abused, and mainly those who were sexually abused by, in the circle of trust, you need to really build trust with them and confidence because it's very difficult to speak about it. And this is really important. And I think we, we have not to start, you know, listing good parents and bad parents because you could be good parents and one time because of, you know, uh, crisis, uh, mental health, uh, problem issues, you can become violent. And this is why we need to have this alert system, not waiting it occur. We need to invest in preventing. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nu se, au, se aude? Așa. UZPR, Uniunea Ziariștilor Profesioniști din România. Întrebarea mea este legată, pentru doamna Elena Tudor, este legată de legea... Ce anume? Nu, este pe plan național și doamna nu are legătură. Deci, privind separarea copilului de familie. Ați spus că e propusă. E propusă spre promulgare? E... În ce stadiu e? De elaborare în acest moment. De elaborare. De elaborare și ea este asumată a fi aprobată la sfârșitul anului. Legat de domnișoara de la Metropola TV, a spus că ar fi necesar verificarea din punct de vedere psihologic, psihiatric a părinților. Întreb, întrebare, Copiii care sunt dați spre adopție, acei părinți, viitori părinți sunt verificați? Bineînțeles, situația e puțin diferită. 
Deci da. părinții viitorii, părinții adoptivi, chiar și părinții asistenții maternali, cei care se ocupă de creșterea și îngrijirea copilor, normal, sunt verificați, sunt evaluați din punct de vedere social, da. psihologic, există evaluare psihologică. Și trebuie să îndeplinească, așa cum știți, condițiile materiale și garanțiile morale. Dar întrebarea doamnei, eu așa am înțeles, se referea la viitorii părinți. Da, da, da. Cei care deci vor de e diferit. părinți, am exact. înțeles. Era vorba de sistemul de adopție și ați spus că e nevoie de transparență, mi se pare logic, și că vor fi, date, vor fi dați mai mulți bani pentru îmbunătățirea celor care banii vin de la Uniunea Europeană? Deci nu am zis de... Dacă vorbim de... Dacă vă referiți la Sistemul Național de Adopție, este un proiect, da, finanțat din fonduri europene da. pe program operațional Competitivitate. Ok, asta a fost. Mulțumesc! <coughs> Miona Nicolescu from Edupedu, I have a question for uh, Gabriel Vocal. It's regarding the national strategy for parenting uh, that the government is implementing along with your help and I understand there are up to 200 uh, people who are going to educate parents in kindergarten, in primary school are being formed by you, are being instructed by UNICEF. How is that going and what are you expecting to happen uh, on the long run with this program? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, and yes, the, we know that the um, uh, parenting strategy can be expected to um, come into life, so to speak, uh, in the near future, uh, which we are very happy about because we believe that parenting and support to parents is uh, a critical investment around preventing and responding to violence. So yes, we, we uh, support uh, some of the work on the ground as well on parenting. Um, to create further evidence and to adapt also training programs around parenting. Um, you see, I'm a father of a five-year-old and a seven-year-old, and so from my own experience, I know with the best of intentions, parents just struggle sometimes with daily life and with children. And so it is in those moments when you may look for information, for guidance, for support. You might have a, a family environment. You may have a social worker that you can access, but you may need just very specific uh, tips and tricks sometimes to manage daily life. And that's, I think, part and parcel of uh, avoiding things like violent discipline uh, and other things that may otherwise occur um, at the home. So we see that as as an uh, important investment um, into local communities, into families, and so on. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you.